The Mabu puffer is probably one of the most iconic puffer fish in the freshwater aquarium hobby. Reaching lengths upwards of two foot and having goofy, personable mannerisms, characters such as aquarium co-ops Murphy and Ladybird have been familiar to many of us who watch fish YouTubers for years. We all know that they eat a ton, need pristine water, and they need extremely large aquaria to thrive. So what happens if one isn't given everything it needs? Now, when he arrived, the first thing that even more experienced monster fish keepers are going to notice about this guy is his sheer size. Even in my seven foot, he looked absolutely enormous, um, topping out over about two foot. It was a good job that I had some time before he needed to um, really stretch out and fly about the tank, because um, yeah, he looked he looked really big in there. He was completely blind and had hardly any energy whatsoever. I definitely suspected that he had internal parasites. Most booby puffers are wild caught and they actually come in with parasites inside them already. And because most shops, most fish keepers don't really deworm their fish, um, not in the same way that you do as your dog and cat, which is how I do it. Um, it was the first thing I did basically within about 10 minutes of getting him in the water. I made sure to give him a really, really good dose of dewormer. Now, there's not much info about food puffers online. Um, unsurprisingly, there's even less to go on about rehabilitating them. So he was completely blind and he was completely dependent on me for absolutely everything. He couldn't find the food. He didn't know what it smelled like. He didn't really know where he was or what he was doing, bless him. So he was very, very hungry. Um, in fact, he ate within half an hour of me actually getting him home and getting him in the tank. So I started feeding him really, really small amounts uh, three times a day, basically, just to start off with. So at first he was very unsure about different foods and some things he just sort of spat out. He didn't want it. Um, what he wanted to try seemed to change every single day. So I had to have a huge range of different shellfish, and seafood, um, loads of different prawns, clams, razor clams, cockles, mussels, the whole shebang. Um, I had a whole freezer full of loads and loads of different foods because I had no idea what he was going to eat. I also added some guppies to the tank um, and some big ram's horn snails as well just to help with his waste and any uneaten food. I was sort of half hoping that he might actually start picking some of them off which did happen with the ram's horn snails, he completely left the guppies alone. Despite everything that seemed to be stacked against him, Bug as I'd start calling him, started to gain weight really really quickly actually and on around day five of being with us he had started becoming much more active. Um, I basically had to learn his unique language. Um, the way that he communicates with humans is a little bit different to other fish. Because he's blind um, and he, he, for the first couple of days he really, really did not know where he was or what direction to swim in. Um, so I had to sort of learn how to communicate with him. I was able to work out when he was hungry, when he wanted more, um, when he really, really just wanted to be left alone. Um, he also let me know, you know, if he needed a water change and things like that. I could start to tell from his behaviour what he was up to and where he was at with um, things, how much food he wanted and all the rest of it. And I was able to tell when his stomach had started to stretch and when it started to really recover and he was able to take larger and larger meals which started to be really really good. To get more vitamins in him I started to stuff his favourite foods with um, massive ore pellets. Um, so they do these smaller ones that are um, basically the same ingredients as Massifor but they're smaller and they're a lot cheaper as well and they worked out really really good because they were just this right size to be able to hide them inside his seafood, his favourite snacks, um, so that even if he only ate half of them he was still going to be getting the vitamins and things from that. So basically I did lots and lots of research and it appears that it's mostly vitamin A, vitamin B12 and thiamine that are mostly the ones that puffers can get deficient in and those incidentally are the ones that control the eyes so this blindness this cloudy eye business that was going on with him I was pretty sure was down to a vitamin deficiency now it's really important to note that most seafood contains thiaminase which is different to thiamine thiamine um, basically it causes vitamin deficiency so you do need to be really really careful what you feed certain fish 
a lot of seafood contains thiamine, so I had to try and get them away from mussels and things like that that contained thiamine because I didn't want to contribute more to any vitamin deficiencies that were causing his eyesight issues. Inevitably though, after about a week of having him, um, he started to get a lot more active and I ended up turning around to my lovely partner and I said those dreaded words, that tank isn't big enough, we need a bigger tank. And he looked at me and went, oh, because this is a bit of a problem when the tank in question is already seven foot, but it wasn't wide enough, he just did not have enough space. So. Once, I mean, I said as soon as I got him in there, I saw that he wasn't big enough, um, and especially now that he had got his energy back and he was starting to swim around a lot more, um, it was very evident that we were going to need something a lot bigger for him. Um, he kept bumping into the walls, he kept bumping into ornaments and things, and it was almost like every time he got up to try and swim, he would bump into something and he would get almost very disheartened and very irritated about it, which I think, you know, I would too. Um, that he just didn't have enough space basically. He could basically go in one straight line, line across the front of the tank, um, but it was contributing more to his lack of activity and not moving around. I was pretty sure of that. So there's also a possibility that we're moving soon, um, which means that a tank upgrade from the sun foot isn't really possible right now. Um, it might be soon. Um, so I had to come up with something uh, else basically for him. Now. You guys remember all that lovely space that I made in the fish room. It was looking really, really tidy, um, looking really, really well put together and it was looking great in there, really, really organized. Um, well, <laughs> I happen to have an Intex um, swimming pool, a six foot one, just going spare. Um, and it's only temporary, but it's about 2000 odd liters. So I decided let's fill that space. There we go. So I have um, mucked it up a little bit because uh, I was playing with the uh, filter outlet, um, but it's definitely not nearly as mucky as it was um, for the last couple of days. So I'm really pleased with that. It is uh, finally clearing up. So uh, basically what I've done is uh, sort of made two little islands. Um, this island is bigger mainly because um, the filter intake is behind there. And I don't really want him going near it. Um, Mainly because I don't want him like blasting sand and stuff into it. So I've got all of the plants and things in the way of the filter in intake, but just like a little bit out of the flow. Um, filter creating as much turbulence as physically possible. Um, and then I've also added a secondary air pump just in case for whatever reason the filter wasn't creating that air. There is a secondary air pump um, with two air stones creating a good bit of flow. So he's got oxygen um, and, you know, the water surface is moving if anything were to happen. Plant-wise, we've got a uh, limnophilia. There's an African onion plant. Um, there's a little bit of dwarf sage. There's some giant vowels, which hopefully I'll be able to grow. I've never been able to grow giant vowels ever in my life. Um, water lettuce, which I believe are from Africa, I think they're African water lettuces. Um, water wisteria, which is um, this big clump here that you can see floating around. It's got lovely big roots on it. Lovely long roots that trail down, so it's really good for um, guppies and things. Duckweed, of course. And I think that's it. Mm, I can't remember if I put anything else in. Probably a little bit of a geria and a lodia in here as well. Um, but the water is testing perfect. I have been chucking loads and loads of food in here. I have just chucked a load more in, um, which I assume the guppies are going around eating. Um, and yeah, the guppies all look pretty happy. They seem quite all right. Not stressed at all, not shimmying or anything. Um, nice hard water in here. So basically, now I think what I'm gonna do is just make sure that the water tests out all right. I'm gonna dump a little bit more food in here um, just to really test it, really make sure I've really, you know, bummed that ammonia right up just to make sure that it's holding, the cycle is holding really well. Um, and then tomorrow, I think we're gonna to put big guy in.
because he's been so so full of being so active going up and down the front glass all day um, every time he sees me and it's a bit like he just looks a bit sad now because he just doesn't have enough space to like start the next part of his healing journey I guess but I was pretty good at getting most of the guppies out there was like 10 left but I imagine my arowana would be very happy with me being able to go back in his tank tomorrow as well So the whole time this pond build was happening, um, Bug had just gone from strength to strength. He was really, really active um, against all the odds. This huge, great big, giant tadpole thing. Incredibly intelligent goofball of a fish. Had just never at any point showed any indication that he wanted to give up. His resolve to survive and to fight against everything and to just keep going was incredible. Like there was never any point where I turned around and went, oh god, I think he's gonna die. I think he's not gonna make it. Um, so I was absolutely terrified to move him. Um, I'm just about to start psyching myself up to move him, basically, um, because I'm a bit nervous about it. <laughs> um, if he goes up outside of the water and he puffs up, he will probably die, because if they get air inside them, it like gets stuck inside of them, and then they can't get it out, and then they float, and it's really, really bad. So basically, like, if, if something happens at this last moment, like where he's like done so well in the last couple of weeks and now he's literally got 10 minutes to go out the road and then he can go into this lovely, amazing, over 2,000 litre tropical pond. Um, he's in a bit of a food coma at the moment. I fed him quite a lot this morning. Um, so yeah, he's just kind of like asleep at the moment. I have no idea what's going on. So I've got a big koi bag, I'm going to try and get him up to the surface using my koi net and then I'm going to, while he's like at the surface in the net, I'm going to use the koi bag to scoop him up with as much water as possible and then basically get him down straight into the tub which is going to have water in it as well. Um, the tub has wheels which is nice um, and a, a like clip closed lid. Um, so we only need enough water to cover him, but it, because of the size of him, it is quite heavy. So I've got lifting, help, both ends, and then basically the same thing reverse on the way back into the pond. So out of the back of my car, I'm probably going to scoop him up, or we might actually just, um, if it's not too heavy, lift it straight out of the back of my car. Um, if I reverse it right up to the doors of the fish room, we might be able to like pick it up and just tip it straight in. Um, so yeah, I'm gonna start psyching myself up. We can do this, come on bug. Please don't let anything happen to you at this last moment. I had to take a couple of deep breaths and I had to be as strong as he was because he had never given up and he has never shown any indication of wanting to, any indication of not having that inner strength uh, to keep going. So I had to do that for him and I had to do this last time to get him in that six foot pond, get him up to the fish room where he could find a big Our new, uh, our new friend, my giant 
Mabu puffer fish uh, that I now have swimming around in a human swimming pool in my fish room. So I'm really, really pleased that it went well. Um, hopefully I didn't get you too much there. Um, but uh, yeah, it worked really, really well. I'm so thrilled that we were able to re rehabilitate him uh, and I'm pretty confident at this stage that he is fixed um, and that he's only going to get better now. I don't think he's going to go back in the other direction. Obviously the same sort of treatment would, yeah, you know, that kind of thing would send it backwards again, but that's never going to happen. Now I mentioned we might be moving. So if we are, um, something like a 10 foot by 4 foot mega tank, one of those um, fiberglass ones with the big windows in the front might be on the cards. Might have space for something like that. Um, the other option, obviously, I probably only go out a couple of months with that Intex pool before it, it starts leaking. Um, I wouldn't be surprised if it's already got a little bit of a slow leak. It's just so much water, I'm not noticing it. Um, but it's, it's only temporary. The trouble with the Intex pools is they tend to um, get quite brittle over time. The plastic isn't really... You know, it's it, there's latex in there, but it tends to get brittle a bit like the um, the non-rubber pond liners tend to get quite brittle as well, the PVC ones. Um, so especially if you have them outside over the winter, um, the cold makes them really, really brittle. And then in the spring, when it expands, that's when they tend to burst. It's not going to happen in the fish room, but it is still going to start getting brittle over time. So if I start bumping into it or if I hit it, hit the side of it the wrong way, um, or if I trip over it and fall into it or something. Um, it's it's not really going to put up with that for very long. Um, there's also a risk of him biting it, which hopefully he won't. I'm pretty sure the sand is deep enough. Um, but yeah, so upgrades in the future. I'm pretty confident he's only going to go from strength to strength from here. Um, I'm so pleased to have been able to share this journey with you. And I can't wait to see what's next for me and this crazy massive puffer fish that has just suddenly landed um in my world so thank you so much for watching and stay tuned for more in the future